All right. Yeah, not looking too bad so far. You can see that our uh, stand-in geometry is working well. It's uh, seeing the sphere and it's making it look like it's on the street. We've got some uh, ambient occlusion in here, which uh, is part of the matte shadow material. All this green. You remember I made that uh, green texture map? Let's take a look at that. This is for our mirror ball. MIP mirror ball. I have the green texture applied to the mirror ball which is plugged into our environment and so you can see how the environment works it's reflected on the sphere here anything you see that's green represents areas that are not directly seen by the camera and are not directly uh, part of the stand-in geometry that I've created you can see right here my uh, road mesh like here's the road it ends right here and you can see it reflected right here here's where it, en where it ends and then it's all green. Here's our environment. And so let's find a uh, an actual mirror ball image. And the mirror ball, what it's supposed to be is the uh, what you would see. Like we're looking at this reflective sphere right here. In the real world, you're going to see everything behind you reflected on this sphere. So what we want is we want a mirror ball image that shows the reflections of everything directly behind where the camera is looking right now. I don't have that, but let's take a look at what we can do instead, if that happens. I'm going to hop over into Photoshop, and here is the uh, photo background that we're using. And I found another picture that's pretty similar. It could almost pass as something that's behind you when you're taking this, uh, this picture. What's behind me? It could be this. You know, you can't prove that it's not. It looks pretty good. So let's uh, make a mirror ball image out of this. Real important thing, I need to make sure this is square, which it's not right now. So I'm going to just go up to image size and make sure constraint proportions is turned off. It's 3680 by 2760. Well, let's just make it uh, 2760 by 2760. It's going to mess up the shape of things, but you're not going to really know. So. Um, that doesn't look right to me. Oh, yeah, that looks okay. All right. Now let's just do one little step here to make sure our colors match a little better with our foreground picture. This isn't necessary, but every little bit helps. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And on my new layer, I'm going to go Image, Adjustments, match color and in here I'm gonna go down to source and select my front photo and what that's gonna do it's gonna scan all the colors from there and try to make these colors look a little bit more like they belong with this picture so you can see here if I you can see what changed between without the color match and with the color match so this looks a little better we're gonna use that and next thing I need to do is make this look like a mirror ball reflection map and so we're just gonna have to hack our way around so let's go to filter distort sphere eyes and just leave it at 100 percent say okay hey that's looking a little better and important thing with your mirror ball shader is that it needs to be clipped right on these four corners here your circle does your sphere so I'm going to um, make a selection a circular selection all the way to the edges here and to do that I'm gonna make sure snap is turned on I want snap to guides enabled and I'm gonna drag some guides out and they're gonna snap once I get to the middle here up oh, that snapped and now this one snap this one in the middle all right I'm gonna choose a circular selection and it's gonna snap to here when I click and start dragging and I, I want to hold down shift to force my selection to hold a perfect circle and I'm going to hold down alt and that makes it center based so I'm going to drag out to the edges of the map as close as I can that's good and we're going to go select inverse and then I'm just going to fill this selection with a uh, solid black. There we go. So there's our chrome ball image. 
that we'll use. So I'm just going to save this. You're never supposed to use JPEG, so just ignore the fact that I'm using a JPEG. Mirrorball. Alright, so let's see how that works in Maya. I'm going to go back to my Mirrorball texture node here. We're going to get rid of this green one. We'll replace it with our new Mirrorball. And now let's do a render and see how that looks. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see where we were before. And all the green is now being replaced with what's in our new Mirrorball shader. And yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll believe that. Looks like the road kind of ends right here. It might be a little downhill beyond what we can see here. And then there's this building in the background. Yep, I'll believe that. That's good enough. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want to use a mirror ball shader is, let me just uh, get rid of that connection. I don't want to get rid of the shader altogether, but let's just move it to the side for now. You can use a spherical environment map. So let me do this. We're going to create MIB lookup spherical. And from here, you can see this is looking for a texture. So let me give this a texture node. And we'll give it this uh, alley behind, which is um, here. This is our the alley behind picture. It's just the, the photo that we use to make our mirror ball from. I'm just going to use the actual photo itself, not anything that's been spherized or anything. So there that is. And what this uh, spherical lookup node is going to do is it's going to use this image, the alley behind photo, and it's going to wrap it around a uh, invisible sphere that surrounds the camera. So it's going to be kind of deformed, but uh, we'll just see what it looks like in our reflections. I'm going to go back to my environment switcher, drag my MIB lookup spherical for the environment, and we'll see what this looks like now. Let me bring up my render window. I'm going to save this image and we can compare it. So we'll render. All right, so this is, it worked, but it's not looking as good as the last thing we had. You can see the, the mirror ball looks really nice. And this is starting to look a little mangled. But if this uh, sphere was not perfectly reflective like it is now, if it was a different kind of material, then we might be able to get away with not having such good looking reflections on here in our environment map. But uh, if we want to address the issue here, everything's just kind of sucking into this one area right here. Let's see what we can do in Photoshop to kind of get around that, at least to some extent. So here's our image. If I go, uh, whoop, let me get rid of this here, here. So let's go filter, where is this? Polar coordinates. I'm going to switch this into a spherical map. So we'll go rectangular to polar, say OK. And this is kind of what it looks like um, as a spherical map. And let me get rid of my guides. You can see right here that we've got these big seams. So let's see if we can make that look a little more natural. It's not going to be perfect, but this is just showing you a little work around here. I'm just going to make a selection around the problem area. And we're going to go edit, fill, choose content aware, and just say OK, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so that's a little better. Uh, it still is kind of messed up looking, but I think it might do. We've got rid of that big, ugly seam. So now I'm going to go back to... Uh, rectangular coordinates and now we're really gonna look messed up but let's just see what we can get away with here I'm gonna save as we'll call this alley behind spherical and let me replace this with our new map and save this image and do another render All right, so it looks a little better. It's still kind of messed up. I'm still liking our uh, mirror ball image the best. 
but there are other options you can do. If, uh, and like I was saying, if your material that you're using is not so perfectly reflective, like let's say, uh, oh, that's not, we, we want our mental ray material here. So reflectivity, let's say it's uh, not quite so reflective. Let's take it down to 0.3 glossiness, 0.3, 16 samples. And let's render that and see what we get. I'm going to save this. All right, so you can see is it's not nearly as reflective as it was before, so you can't really see all the weird, messed up looking reflections. So just depends on what you're doing and what your end result is going to be. All right, and I am going to disconnect our spherical map, and I'm going to put our mirror ball back in there. Uh, that looked pretty nice. All right, we'll do one more render so we can see our current status. And I forgot to put our reflective material back to how it was. Let me do that. All right, and render. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we need to remove the reflection from the street now because that is looking kind of messed up. So let's find our matte shadow material in here. And I want to, let's just turn off catch reflections altogether. And I'm going to make a couple more spheres just for fun. Drag one over here. Maybe one more up on the walls. Let's see what we're going to reflect in that area. Yeah, okay. Let's bring it down a little bit. Maybe we'll get we'll get to see some of this stuff reflecting up here. All right, let's do a render, see where we're at. All right, so it's looking pretty good. We don't have the weird reflections anymore on the road. You can see the ambient occlusion in the matte shadow materials looking nice. And we're getting nice reflections that we would expect from our matte shadow material. All right, so I hope this has helped to uh, help you understand the basic setup for this kind of stuff. And happy rendering.